in this episode of Sky Flowers TV, we're going to ask the question, what is a sky flower? Best place to answer that is to come up here and to take a look at my rooftop garden. Now, sky flower is basically a word used to describe a plant that can grow up in the treetops. Uh, we're talking about epiphytic plants. So generally a sky flower is anything that grows up high up in the treetop canopies like orchids, bromeliads, things like that. Uh, if we have a look at this plant here, you'll see there's a lot of uh, dead matter here. Now, typically how a bromeliad grows is that the old mature plants will grow, will flower, will fruit, and then they'll slowly die. But the main colony doesn't actually die. What actually happens is, is that this plant here actually feeds the young and provides food for the next generation. So as you can see, there's probably two or three old plants, maybe four there, but it's given birth to one, two, three, four, five, five new ones. So what's essentially happening is that four plants are dying as five are growing. And that'll happen year after year after year in, in kind of like a two year cycle. So eventually what you end up with is a cluster of bromeliads. Now this one here, uh, for those who use the sky flowers, is the cathedral flower. Um, although it doesn't look like much, it's actually, this is typically how they uh, look in the wild, like high up in the treetops. When you grow plants in pots, for instance, in the garden and places like that, um, plants tend to grow lush and they're about probably about three times the size of what they normally would be if you grew them epiphytically. Um, uh, such as on a rock or on the side of a tree. Now, as you can see, this plant here is not rooted in the ground. It's been up on this roof for about uh, six, 12 months and is, well, for all intents and purposes, functioning quite well. It's, it's, it's surviving. Um, the, we're on a north facing aspect here. So this is getting roughly eight to 10 hours of sunlight per day. Um, yeah, probably probably around about that in winter too. So what we're getting is harsh North Australian sunlight coming down on these plants. So the question is, how does it survive? Well, with any bromeliad, um, I'll just have a look around to see if I can find a good example. Probably, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, this one over here. We'll take a look at this and flip it over. Just under the undersides of the leaves there, you'll see there's tiny little sort of gray sort of uh, scales, I guess you'd call them. Now those, those gray scales, they're actually tiny little microscopic suction cups. Um, and the role of those suction cups is to basically capture moisture particles out of the air. So these plants, as you can see, is not rooted in the ground. It could be anywhere, it could be up in a tree or on a rooftop like this. And those tiny little suction cups actually draw moisture out of the air to feed the plants. So the way these plants have adapted themselves is that they don't so much rely on roots for nutrients and moisture, they pull it in through the leaves. So any, any moisture that's sort of floating around in the breeze, you know, on the evening breeze, it gets captured in the leaves, drawn inside the leaf and is used to feed the plant. The other way they feed themselves is directly through rainfall falling on top of them and any food that falls in such as leaf matter and you know falling bits of debris from higher up in the treetop canopy um, is used to feed these plants. So as you can see here this is another colony of bromeliads that's um, living perfectly well in its sky or its treetop garden. Um, the beautiful bronze red this, this one, showing that it's sort of adapting to a harsh environment. It's putting on sun protection to um, basically shield itself from the light. But, you know, for, for quite a happy plant here. In fact, these, these will flower in about a month or two. Um, let's take a look at what else we can see up here, just to give you a bit of an example. Um, if I pick up this prickly thing here, 
this is a this is a great example so as you can see you know there's plenty of life there looking in amongst it you'll see a bit of dead leaves and a bit de dead leaf matter but that's that's generally how plants grow like we've got this idea that you know gardening is about picture perfect you know not a leaf out of place lawns and all that kind of thing but this is actually how nature grows plants so nothing wrong with these plants here's another one here we pick this up see the old growth there that's dying off new ones here new pups there's some there's actually two new pups in there if you get a get a bit of a close look there's a little bubby one there and that one there growing perfectly well perfectly healthy plants not a care in the world so even this one over here that's flowered up on this roof what else can we see over here uh, let's see I've got a couple over here I'll show you I'll put these in the shade under the apple tree here just because they are a bit, of, a bit more of a delicate one but as you can see these plants they're growing quite well like this one's in a uh, just a thin little bowl not much soil in there or potting mix flowers quite well for those people into the sky flowers this is the queen of queen's tears really good for emotional relief sort of regulating the emotions this is this is a perfect specimen here again in a very thin bowl doesn't need much root space quite happy up on its treetop garden now what we might do i'll just travel down i'll just go back down my ladder and we'll take a look at some of the other sky flowers up in the treetops there so I've planted a few around the garden. Let's let's see, let's see what we can see. We'll look up in the treetop, I'll just adjust the camera. Just up in the treetop up here. That's the flower of surrender. Again, all I've done there is put uh, taken it out of its pot and wedged it in an old tree. And that plant's been there for oh, oh, close to 10 years now. And as you can see, it's doing quite well in amongst the hibiscus over here. Uh, let's see what else we can find. 